I'm excited. I'm here with Kitty Anderson and Happy Hour Flower. We're going to talk about designing with flowers and flower arrangements and all the goodies and stuff that go with it. Flowers have been your hobby for a long time. Tell me about it. When did yes. you get started? How long have you been doing this? I started my business about 15 years ago, very part-time, and uh, I went full-time about 10 years ago. Um, I just have always had a passion for flowers, especially natural flowers, mm -hmm. the field flowers, garden flowers, more so than horticultural varieties. Um, and I just love having fresh flowers on my kitchen table and it makes me feel wonderful, hence the name Happy Hour Flower. I think fresh flowers mm -hmm. in your home brighten your spirits more than anything else. And you turn it into a business. I have. I read in the Wall Street Journal that if you wanted a service that you could not find, chances are that would be a good business <laughs> to begin. So yeah. I tried it and uh, it has just grown by word of mouth mm -hmm. over the years. and. Um, I work out of my home, which I enjoy. Always and worked out of your home? Always have. This, this home's not that old. Though. You well, I started in a much smaller house working out of my kitchen, which was, uh, as the business grew, I outgrew. So I was faced with either um, renting a shop or building a bigger home. So we built this home <laughs> and I decision. built a shop in the basement. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to see that shop here in a minute. Yes, yes. It's just a workshop, but it's very functional. It's very nice. It's like my greenhouse. It's not. It's, yes. it's kind of ugly to me, but it's really interesting, yes. Indeed. Okay. Well, we'll be right back. We're going to go down and take a look at the workshop, okay? Let's okay. Go. Sounds good. Well, here we are in Kitty's workshop. And Kitty, before we get going here, what about the wall? Oh, Let's we have a talk about the wall. graffiti wall. Everybody that comes to visit the workshop uh, has to sign in. So before you leave, you'll have to sign Even your Tammy name to the wall. Dan? Well, sure, everyone. Okay. Well, this is where everything happens down here. You got your water and your 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 containers and your your Snapple deal back here in the corner. And, and the, <laughs> the wonderful thing about working in the basement and the reason I wanted a shop in the basement is the climate control environment. In the summer when it's really, really hot, even with air conditioning, oh, the yeah. basement stays nice and cool. And in the winter, when, you know, no matter how cold it gets, the basement is the perfect temperature for flowers. It's kind of like wine. It's yeah, huh? um, a, a real good temperature to to yeah. keep e even unrefrigerated things. Heat is the uh, enemy of flowers, right? Cut it dries flowers. them out and um, yes, it's not What other enemies of flowers? Are there any other things you want to... Uh, bacteria. Bacteria. Um, I'll talk to you a few minutes when I do designs in just vases of water. I always pour a few drops of bleach into the water to prevent the bacterial growth because that clogs the vessels in the stem of the flower. The xylem vessels. I mean, that's the scum you see on there. Is that what it is? Well, it just it, most of it's microscopic, but it does clog the vessels, and they—that's really more important that they can get water up the stems than feeding them. A lot of people are wanting to give them soda and food, and you know that's fine, but they can't get any of that unless mm -hmm. their vessels are clear. So, so every once in a while you want to recut the bottoms of them. Of I've seen that done. Bleach works great, and yes. Um, Especially um, if they're out of water for any length of time, they, the bottoms seal over. So recut the stems mm -hmm. and cut them at a diagonal to get the, the most more space open uh, um, surface canal area. Space. That's correct. <laughs> so the first thing you do when you think about designing is I think of containers. Um, my whole philosophy in starting this business is I think flowers should be enjoyed every day of the week, not just for special occasions. Um, and so for those of you who enjoy fresh flowers in your home, um, look around in your yard, along the roadsides, mm -hmm. in nature, and look at your vases. Most people don't want to reuse typical florist vases. So look at, uh, my husband is in science. This uh, makes a great, you know, beakers, flask, all kinds of scientific um, mm -hmm. containers. Where is the... a scientific one there. That's oh, grandma's. The, a canning jar with a little raffia tied, a, a ribbon tied around it, uh, filled with daisies or 
tulips or mm -hmm, anything that mm -hmm. might be I've done growing that in the I, field. I take that out in the yard and, I, and I use it to, to mm -hmm. gather my flowers and I put them into others. This is just a little bud vase that I picked up uh, at a shop and the, this is Helleborus or Linton uh, rose that many of you, it's blooming right now, mm -hmm. uh, you may have in your yard and it grows drooped over. It's not even all the way open yet, but uh, it makes a nice little bud vase. And even this little uh, scientific flask, just a single <laughs> daffodil. You probably know that you can't use daffodils in arrangements with other flowers because they emit a toxin um, into the water that will kill other things. So that's why, you know, if you just find, uh, you can use a grouping of daffodils together or just a single one in a little whimsical bottle just by your mm -hmm. kitchen sink, just can brighten your day. That's right. And what are these right here? Um, these are anemones. Um, they do grow in gardens in the summer. These I, I had to purchase uh, from the wholesaler because of mm -hmm. the time of year that it is. But again, these were just sitting on our kitchen table for St. Patrick's Day, oh, something wonderful. a little green and white. Um, these, these bloom right through the winter. Uh, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. They do. They're they're this is one so pretty, for all winter long. especially when there's snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. They look so pretty. Um, and yeah. for my first arrangement, I would like to just um, suggest putting some branches or all one type of flower in a vase. It's very simple. Anybody can do it. And flowers in vases of water hold up better than designs in oasis um, mm -hmm. because they get more moisture. Now when you get the limbs, do you smash the ends or you, there's it different depends, theories on that? It depends on um, the type of plant material that it is. But uh, if it's a thick stem, then smashing it's very good. It kind of crushes those vessels open. Oh. It, but you don't do that with uh, soft stemmed Smashes flowers. Them together, them <laughs> That's up. correct. I've, I've heard both ways and I've also heard you take scissors and, and, and just Cut them a bunch of times on the bottom. Split them, like split you it real. You can do the that. Mm -hmm. Anything that it takes to get the water mm -hmm. up into the stems. Now you're talking about the uh, limbs. I see you got pussy willows back here, and you have persithias. Um, again, I tried to think of things people might have growing in their yard or growing wild, and my forsythia from my yard aren't open yet. Um, but if you'll bring me some stems, I will. Um, now mine, these, for instance, these, these aren't open, but these all the way are not open. They're at, just at my starting. house are already open and they're falling off. They're they're past their prime. But so if different you varieties, I guess. Just put them in a vase of water. Um, well, you want to water in there right now? There's not, but we'll add. We're some pretending in there's just water in there, Dan. Um, cut off any foliage, leaves, thorns, whatever is going to be below the surface of the water. You don't want, because again, that will cause bacterial buildup. So anything that is going to be in the water, cut off. You just want a clean stem. And just the rule of thumb is um, your container, your design should come up about two and a half times the height of the container. So if you have a tall container, you want to put in a tall arrangement. Now, I think one of the nicest things about uh, flower designs is rules are made to be broken. And that's... Uh, <laughs> that's easy for me, I'll tell you. That's where, uh, you know, if it just looks right to you, then go with it. it you don't have to always follow the rules. But when you're just well, learning... There, like, the, and again, the, not only will the container tell you you know, what would look good in it. Like, obviously, you wouldn't put forsythia in something real small, but it needs to be something that it can do its own thing and look very natural. I love um, that one. But they kind of speak to you, the, the lines of the plant, sort of. And these clippers you can get from your master gardeners. Yes. They are wonderful. Yes, master gardeners. You need um, <laughs> sharp, good clippers. It's it just makes everything so much easier, and it, it doesn't crush your vessels. If if you use something dull, it'll crush the vessels. It only takes one more payment to go first class, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, 
Okay, we, this is 100% do we have for one Cynthia. more stem. And a lot of people have these growing in their yard right now, or you could go to your neighbor's yard. He wouldn't uh, miss them. That's Wouldn't right. They huh? would, and it's good for the plant to that's trim right. on it. Um, oh, that's neat there. Okay, I'm going to cut this little dead piece off. Let's, this, can I have one more branch? I now think this, we need this one will, more uh, These things will open up now? These yes. Uh, once we get them this is perfect in nice water, up yet. and yeah. again, if you want to force them open, put them in warmer water and put them in a warmer room. If you want to slow down their opening, keep them cool and keep them in cold water. But since we're having all this rain, I wanted to cut some so that That's beautiful. they just so just a simple vase for Scythia I'm going to set this on my piano upstairs and for Easter it should all be open so let me set this aside and show you one other thing but there's you all can. kind of things that in the spring that bloom like this there's that you all your fruit trees for, for instance your yes. crab apples crab and your apples cherries and your plum beautiful. trees have beautiful your pussy willows you have back here they're blooming in the spring. You can force those, and if you cut them right before they pop open, then that's the perfect time. Exactly. That's the best time. Once they're at their peak, they won't last long in the house. So you mm -hmm. want to get them right before they are at their prime. Um, this is larkspur. Um, it, uh, this time of year, it doesn't bloom outside, but you can get it from the wholesaler. Or, um, it comes in pink, white, and purple. And again, just using it by itself in a vase of water, um, I think is very a very pretty and very effective centerpiece. This is my kind of flower arranging. It uh, doesn't take a <laughs> whole lot of scientific. The only <laughs> thing you have to do is make sure, again, that the, the leaves and the greenery stripped from the bottom. Um, because, again, because if, uh, why? Uh, to prevent bacterial buildup. Again, if you have a pretty crystal vase or a pretty Linux vase or whatever that you don't get to use often and it's sitting in your ca cabinet all the time, um, get it out and uh, just put a single bunch of flowers and you have a very impressive centerpiece with very little trouble and very little uh, expense. Mm -hmm. This is more my kind of design. I, I noticed that a lot of the designs that they, the really uh, artistic, uh, high, high end uh, designs, they have like a piece of driftwood, a rock, yes. and one bloom. And, and that's supposed to be a flower arrangement. I really like the multiple flowers better. This to me is much more natural. And mm. that is my specialty. Again, there are some very good, very dramatic um, flower designers, um, but I just, my love is for the natural look that you've gone out into your garden and you've just brought in everything and yes. put it in a vase of water and springtime's um, the best. That's when everything. Spring and even really the wildflowers. Summer and fall in this climate are excellent times. Go just a huge vase of goldenrod is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Queen Anne's lace, all kinds of field weeds. flowers. You can even get weeds, yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of yeah. what Queen Anne's lace is. <laughs> that's a pretty pretty but, weeds. Uh, it is very nice. Um, so, I wanted to show you just simple designs in a vase of water. And next, I would like to show you how to use Oasis. If okay, you want. let's let's go up. Let's go take some of the flowers upstairs. Well, I'm on the patio. Okay. And let's take a break, and we'll be right back. All right. Don't turn that channel. Tammy wanted to go upstairs and we overruled her, Tammy. <laughs> We're going to stay right here and finish the show downstairs. Oh, and by the way, you teach at the same place where we work. Yes, I am a part-time instructor. I teach biology at uh, Western Kentucky Community and Technical right. College. One of and us. So, um, and I do a lot of flower arranging for co the college events and dinners. So and when they so go to those dinners out there and they see all these flower arrangements, it's Hopefully Kenny they're Anderson. mine. That's right. Um, a happy hour flower. I told you I would put together an arrangement in Oasis. This takes a little more time, um, but if you are you know want to do a mixed centerpiece, um, just get any kind of saucer 
or this is just a plastic, uh, this is a regular floral one, but you can use um, a, just a plastic liner from a plant. You can use a saucer, a yogurt cup if it's a small something that you want to do, or a Cool Whip tubs are really good liners to put in baskets. And can that things. just not go right, in, right into the container though? You can. This is the container I'm going to use. Um, this is obviously uh, a springtime container, but uh, in the fall of the year, you know, it's the same idea. Um, you could put flowers directly in here, but I have learned the hard way that sometimes containers that you use over and over spring a leak. <laughs> and once your arrangement is all together, you don't want to discover that it's leaking. Okay. Also, if you're using a silver container or crystal, you just maybe want a liner to protect the finish, especially if it's an antique bowl or something. So I usually uh, do something that will just slip in, it will be concealed, uh, but it's easy to work in. Uh, what did you say this stuff was again? Um, the for brand our name of this is called Oasis. And is there different kinds? There are different kinds. Uh, it is uh, fresh floral foam. They also make uh, floral foam for silk flowers. So make sure you get the fresh uh, flower uh, foam. It's, it absorbs the water. The other it one does. It absorbs water, and um, if you soak it until it's filled with water, once it's filled with water, it's very heavy, um, and you can put your flower stems, you range them however you want, and they'll stay in place. That's the advantage that it has. Um, once your flowers die, um, the oasis should be discarded. Uh, it has to be kept moist at all times to reuse it. If you let it dry out, um, you can't reuse it again. And if mm -hmm. it's full of holes, you know, <laughs> usually I've tried once the it. flowers are dead, but just throw it away. Where can you get that stuff? Um, you can get it from any florist or uh, anybody who works, you know, I've seen in that Walmart, line. I think. Do they? I, I thought Hobby. I know Hobby, Hobby Lobby, Lobby has it. the silk kind. I didn't know if they had the fresh flower. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just about anywhere yeah. it sounds like. Um, okay, so be, begin. Um, I think I'm going to use. Uh, some pussy willow in this arrangement. There are two ways you can start this arrangement. Oh, and I didn't tell you to tape it on. Uh, to secure it, this is floral tape, but you can also cut strips of duct tape and use that, but something that will keep it uh, in position. You can start by what we call greening up by filling it with greenery and then adding your flowers or you can start by adding the flowers and then filling in all the holes with greenery. I like to use mixed greens. I think it gives it um, a variety of textures and um, color. So I prefer to do that instead of all one thing. And I'm going to do, I'm going to get my height with the pussy willow and then I'll start adding the greenery. But you can do it either way, whatever is most comfortable for you. Can't make mistakes, right? You can't go into it thinking, I, I, can, I can right. make a mistake. Now, if you feel like you've put a stem in a wrong position, just pull the stem out, but recut it because the vessels will have oasis blocking their pores. So uh, you can pull the stems in and out of the oasis and uh, re insert them, but you do need to recut the stem when you do that. Again, the rule of thumb is about two and a half times the um, height of the container. Now there's going to be a flower show judgment at the, at the McCracken County every year in June. Do you, yes. ever, do you ever enter that, your designs? I have not. My children have entered it and oh. they both won won ribbons. Uh, well, good for so them. My two youngest children have entered it and won ribbons. They were really excited. That's uh, really a first class show too. It's really it really away. is. Yes. It is very impressive. People ought to just at least go down there and look at it even if they don't. Even, don't That's you know. what I always do. If I don't enter it, I, I always go see. And usually there are a lot of people that you know mm -hmm. that have... Uh, Gardeners. Yes, that have entered and you can find, learn a lot by going to that. This is a little larkspur that I'm adding uh, to pick up the color in the container. Um, 
Those are beautiful. Again, for some height. I thought they were delphiniums. They are very similar. Delphinium has the very same structure. A delphinium is typically blue rather than lavender. Larkspur comes in pink, white, and purple and is fairly long-lasting. Um, typically people um, say use either uh, odd numbers, threes, fives. Um, it's a good rule of thumb. It's not necessarily um, gospel. You can a lot of times you'll see things with just two blossoms or, you know, depending on how you arrange them. Um, I like to use, besides height, I like to use some large focal flowers, and I thought yellow would work well with most decor. And I'm going to put one blossom down low. And that is a? Oh, this is an enchantment lily. Enchantment, it, enchantment lilies. Um, come in a variety of colors. They have no fragrance um, versus if you want to pull up a stargazer, they, are, they have a lot of fragrance. So some people like fragrance and some people don't. And you pulled off those stamens. Um, oh, I, I pulled the stamens off of the flower. Those are the male reproductive structures that produce the pollen grains. Um, the, the male guys, you wouldn't have to. <laughs> the reason I pulled them off as they mature and the flower ages, um, they turn brown, and if they shed on a white tablecloth, that can cause staining. So I just pull them off, even though I really like the look of having them on because it's more natural. Would have never thought of that. One. I don't want to have to deal with an irate customer who is. <laughs> Dan, would you have thought of that? <laughs> Has nothing to do with reproduction, then. No, no, not at all. It's just so you don't have to wash your tablecloth. <laughs> now, what kind of lilies are they? I know that was the, the name of them, but are these what they call it? Are they Asiatic? Or? Yes. Uh, enchantment is another. It's the same thing as Asiatic lilies. Uh, it just depends on the grower, whether they call them Asiatic or enchantment. Okay, and I have one lily that's not open yet, but I will probably use it because it Beautiful will be foliage. open by the time I need it. Let's see. Um, did you see how he did that? You didn't go at the top, you went the, stuck at the side, Dan? <laughs> and the nice thing about this is that you can move this you know, move it around because I didn't tape it to the container. And I'm thinking I need a focal flower right in the front. Let's see what else I have. Status gives you a nice uh, deep purple color and status is a familiar sight. It uh, dries just like it is fresh. You don't do anything special to it either, do you? Just, no, just... it just dry. I love flowers that just dry on their own. <laughs> hydrangea is good at that, too. Yeah, you wouldn't think a hydrangea would. But they typically do. Do you grow any of these kind of flowers in your yard that you use and during this, this? I grow a lot of the greenery that I use. Um, I, I grow a lot of perennials. Um, uh, Baptisia is one of my favorites that I grow. I grow a lot of yarrow. Um, I grow whatever is very easy and doesn't <laughs> require much maintenance. And lately drought resistant, of course. Yes, yes. Anything that doesn't require a lot of babying, I, I try to get. Peonies, I have some nice peonies, hydrangea. Um, again, it depends on the year. I have lilacs. Um, I like using roses. Um, there are so many beautiful varieties of roses. This is a really unusual one um, that I, I found this week. And so many of roses are, uh, you just see red, white, and yellow, and uh, pink, and there are many, many varieties of unusual coloration. So um, I try to use things that aren't overly used don't see a lot of. I notice how you're doing it like a pyramid or a, the top is the center is the highest and then it gets smaller as you go around the edges. Is that normally how you do that? Um, it just depends on what I need it for. This is for 
a dining room table for a luncheon and um, they need they want it to be tall mm -hmm. a, a focal point and so again it, it just depends on yeah. you wouldn't want a tall one at a dinner table where you couldn't see your no, no. guy across the street <laughs> that's right. right you have to consider and those are things I try to ask my customers okay how will it be used mm -hmm. how low does your chandelier hang you mm -hmm. know they'll measure it tell me how big the table is and that sort of thing. Um, these are little asters. You usually see these in September. I think they're the September flower, but um, I thought they would be very pretty for this type of arrangement. Um, just the color with the yellow centers. That's okay. And I've heard of conditioning flowers. Oh, yes. And uh, do you have to do that or do you? Definitely. When my flowers come in, often they've been dry packed. They've been traveling out of water. So the first thing you do is cut the stems at a diagonal, get them soaking, let them absorb as much water as quickly as possible. And then if they need to open up, I leave them sitting out. Again, that's why the basement is such a good mm -hmm. place. Um, if they are fairly open, then I refrigerate them. So you wouldn't want to start an arrangement immediately as soon as you got those dry packed flowers, you want to wait? No, you need to wait and usually they're not at their peak when you get them, you need to let them open up. Mm -hmm. For weddings, uh, roses, I like to get in two days before the wedding and then I can control um, how fast they open typically. Unless it's 110 in August, then <laughs> sometimes it's out of my control. And now I need to start adding some of that greenery I was telling talking. you about. What? Okay, to finish up, up, up the arrangement, I like to use salal. It's called lemon leaf, and um, it, it has a neat, neat texture, just like uh, foliage in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, and leather leaf, of course, is frequently used. Uh, if you need a greenery that drapes down over a container, um, uh, that uh, willow eucalyptus is wonderful. It's oh a wonderful greenery that will drape down over your container. But um, so this arrangement is just about finished. I'll just finish up with greening it up and then uh, we'll take well, a look at it. One question, I heard something about sticking in the stems in hot water to seal them. Which what plants are those, do you know? Um, milkweed, anything with a milky oh, okay. extract, uh, you can do that too. And a number, um, another, number of them like that. Yes. Okay, well that looks awful, awfully good. <laughs> are you almost well, done? I'll, I still have to add quite a bit of greenery to it okay. because I don't like any holes, but I can do well, that later. But right, I think you can time. get the idea. We've really had a good time today, and I've learned a lot. Have you, Tammy? Have you learned a lot? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed uh, going through this with you. Oh, and yes. Hope it, we'll have to go back okay. again sometime. Yes. We have to do another one. That I know there's great. all different kind of ways to do these. This is just one way, right? Oh, yes, yes. And you can't make so, mistakes. Just dive in. That's right. Just just try it and have a good time. It's, it's a lot of fun, and the more you do it, the easier it becomes and the better you get. Well, thank you, Kitty. Thank you.